Welcome everyone to MTG Deck Masters. Today's video is about my first modern Friday Night Magic since the bans that happened on Monday. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that Fury and Up the Beanstalk got banned in modern and that was great news for most of us but bad news for some of us that were playing Ragdoll Scam. I hope that's not you because I hated that deck. But I played Amulet Titan on Friday. I did not play Twiddle Storm or Twiddle Ring because I hadn't played this deck in a while and I just really felt like playing it because last week I played against another guy playing Amulet Titan and it just reminded me of how fun this deck is and at so many times I was correcting his plays in my, in my mind and uh, I thought I could do it much better than a lot of other Amulet players so why not play this deck uh, after the bans especially since I think this deck's gotten significantly better now that there's a lot less Blood Moon in the format. So I'll just show you my deck list. It has changed a little bit ever since my last deck list update. Then I'll go through my matches. So first I have four copies of Arboil Grazer. I have four Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Next I have one Azusa Lost But Seeking. Four Prime Time. Of course, one of the best cards in the deck. Then I have one Cultivator Colossus. I used to have two, but I think one is enough because you very rarely... Um, cast it naturally when you don't get it with a Summoner's Pact. Then I have four Amulet of Vigor. Four copies of Summoner's Pact. I'll put it here because it's pretty much like a creature. Four Summoner's Pact, four Amulet. Four The One Ring. Great card, honestly. I played against... Um, there's a guy at my local store that uh, loves my videos and he always wants to play against me. So... Uh, Thank you for that. I love to play Magic, especially when I can make some videos. I, I'm the kind of person that stays after Friday Night Magic to play uh, games on end because I just, I never get tired of it. And I was playing a creature deck. It's uh, a new budget modern deck that I just built. And the One Ring was literally saving him so many times. I hate this card when I play against it, but when I play it, I love it. Four Ring, then one Expedition Map to get with Urza Saga. Then the rest of the deck is lands. So I have one Vesuva, four Urza Saga, and three the Mycosynth Gardens. One Sun Home, one Slayer Stronghold, two Cavern of Souls, one Bajukabog, two Valakut, uh, two Odawaras, which is a new addition. I did not have any in the deck, but then I added two copies. The reason why is I built the deck very quickly before Friday Night Magic and it was missing two cards. And I found out after that these cards were one Forest and one Simigrill Chamber, but I put two Odawaras because that's what I had. And these were great because there was a scenario where I, I had played all my Titans and I could not kill my opponent, but I could, I cast the Cult Cultivator Colossus and I put Bounce Lands and Odawara on the, on the battlefield. I had like triple amulet, so uh, I had my um, what did I have on the? No, I don't remember how I don't remember how that worked, but exactly because the board was insane. But I remember I could bounce my Odawara with Simigrill Chamber and then use it on my own Titan to cast it again to get another trigger because you can return even a creature that you own to your hand. So that card was really good, but I think I'm gonna play only one in the future. Uh, especially since I don't think playing three semi-girl chamber is optimal. I don't know why I lost one or how it happened, but sometimes you lose cards. Three Baseju, one Barrel's Garrison, two Selesnya Sanctuary, three Girl Turf, three semi-girl chamber, two Forest, and two Talaria West. So that was my main deck. Now for the sideboard, I had three Dismember, two Force of Vigor, one Cavern of Souls, two Endurance, two Veil of Summer, three Tireless Tracker, and two Engineered Explosives. So that's my current sideboard. Uh, I think this list was pretty good. Maybe not the most optimal right now because I didn't really change it since the shakeup in the modern metagame. But we don't know what the metagame is going to look like exactly. So I don't think I'm going to make any changes in the very near future. I mean, in the next week or two. I'm just going to keep playing it and see... Uh, what, which decks are really popular and what the metagame looks like. We know for a fact there's a lot of Hardened Scales, a lot of Yawgmoth, but other than that, we don't really know. 
Um, it's mm, it might just look like the metagame before the of the beanstalk printing without ragdoll scam and four color. It's gonna be probably a lot less popular. So here's how my tournament went. Uh, there was a uh, Santa Claus, uh, I don't know how you call this, a Santa Claus rally, Santa Claus uh, parade or something. So um, I got stuck in traffic and I had to take a different route. And then it turns out the road was blocked. So I got one hour late at Friday Night Magic. Well, around 15 minutes late, but still that was too late for round one. I told them to start without waiting for me because I don't want everybody to wait for 15 minutes just for me to come to the store. So I got a, a round one loss, and then while during um, while the people were playing, I practiced against hardened scales, and I won. I lost round uh, game one because I um, did not have right timing for my Boseju. This deck is really hard to play against. It's also really hard to play with. And then game two, I just won pretty easily because my opponent was too slow. Uh, those were just two practice games. And then round one, I got paired against one of my friends playing Is it Murktide. And by the way, all of my matches will be up on the gameplay channel, the MTG Deckmasters gameplay channel. You can check that out right now. I almost have 500 subscribers as of the recording of this, so I'm pretty excited. I'm trying to get to 1,000 by the end of next year. And I know that's a pretty realistic goal, maybe like 2,000. <laughs> but I played against Murktide, and I just absolutely destroyed him both games. He just couldn't do anything. Um... Normally, this is supposed to be a bad matchup, but I don't know. It felt really easy. It's just uh, just a scenario where I don't know. It's it's I don't have anything interesting to say because game one I just destroyed him with Primeval Titan. He couldn't do anything. He didn't have counter spells. I had Cavern of Souls, and then game two I had my Endurance that could block his Ledger Shredders and his uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler, and I also had Tireless Tracker. And then he just scooped because he ran out of resources and I had five cards in hand. And I showed him my hand. It was like double Summoner's Pact, Primeval Titan, Tireless Tracker, and a Colossus. It was the, the craziest hand ever. Something like that, like all gas. And then round two, I got paired against a pretty hot deck right now. It's Orzov Scam. Because even Wizards of the Coast in their ban and restricted announcement said that Scam is most likely going to go from Ragdos to Orzov. But I've said in one of my videos this week that Ragdos Scam is much different to Orzov. Because if you go turn one Grief Ephemerate, then you go, you make the opponent discard two cards, sure. But then on the other turn, you're going to rebound the Ephemerate. So you can't even attack on turn two, most likely. Unless you want your opponent to keep their good cards. So that deck is really slow, it's really grindy. And my opponent was playing a version with Triomes and Leyline Bindings and also the One Ring. Uh, game one, I won quite easily because he had a very hard time dealing with all the threats I could present. And I had Boseju for his Leyland Binding on my amulet, so that allowed me to win. And then game two, it was a really long game. He had uh, the one ring that could prevent me from attacking. I had a crazy board, like triple Titan, a Cultivator Colossus, and uh, two Dryads. And I, I was going to win with Valakut, but I kept just killing his creatures because... Um, remember that Valakut, Valakut's trigger is you may, so I didn't have to destroy my creatures or deal damage to myself. So I just had this huge board with like 12 lands, a Colossus, three Primeval Titans, and two Dryads, and even double Tireless Tracker to make a bunch of clues. But he had the One Ring three turns in a row to prevent me from winning, and he had a bunch of removal, but he just ended up scooping on the fourth turn where he could not draw the fourth ring to prevent himself from getting killed by Valakut. So now it was 2-0, 4-0, um, at least in my real matches, not the round one loss. Then third round, I got paired against Merfolk. And I won game one pretty easily. Uh, my opponent uh, my opponent just didn't have enough counter spells and stuff to interact with my creatures. And then game two, I took a calculated risk because I had triple amulet on the battlefield. I had a bounce land in hand, so I could not really develop a a land a land presence on the battlefield. And I had Primeval Titan. I had the Summoner's Pact in hand to get the Primeval Titan. So I'm like, okay, my opponent is tapped out. If I play this bounce land, if I play Summoner's Pact, I play this bounce land, I get a Primeval Titan, the game's over. So I played the bounce land first, just in case he had some sort of 
Vodalian hex catcher. Who knows? I don't know. But it just it seemed it seemed a lot safer to me. So I played the bounce land, make six mana, cast the summoner's pact, resolves. I'm like, nice. No force of negation. I get Primeval Titan, I cast it, and he has subtlety. So he I decided to put the Titan on top, but then I just couldn't pay for the pact. So I just scoop. That's how he won game number two. And game number three was a pretty long one. Yeah, there was a bunch of scenarios where he could counter my pack by sacrificing all his merfolks to Vidalian Hexcatcher. But it ended up not working out in his favor because he told me at the end of the match that if he had sacrificed all his merfolks to counter a pack, I could just have another Titan or another pack. It wouldn't vary as easily. So he just ended up letting me do my combo and it just worked out in my favor. He had subtlety, I believe, twice for Primeval Titan, but I just put it on top every single time. I just cast it the next turn, and then I was able to win on, like, two life, I believe. Uh, even though I had a ring on the battlefield, it almost killed me, but I still was able to win uh, quite, not easily, but uh, by a landslide, I would say, by the end of the game. This is one of those decks where when you win, the wins are crazy. Because the deck does some of the most powerful things you can do in modern right now. So I went 3-0. and I won six games. I lost one. And I made tons of misplays. I missed so many triggers. I got the wrong lands with Primeval Titan. I missed Tireless Tracker triggers. I missed scenarios where I could cast some cards because I had dried on the battlefield. And I didn't, I didn't realize that I could tap my lands for any color. Well, I know that, but I just, I just didn't think about it. And um, I miss sequence sometimes. So even though I did not play very well, I don't think I played. I played. I, I don't think I played well. I think I played okay for Amulet Titan, and I still ended up winning all three matches. And these three matches were not even close. Uh, maybe except the Merfolk one. But I think this deck is just too good. I think it's just way too good. Uh, I say that in a positive way. I don't think it's getting banned anytime soon, but it's just so good. I love this deck. It's a ton of fun. And I love these kind of decks where after your tournament, you feel like you've made some decisions. Not like last week where I played Seismic Swans and Modern, a $10 deck. And I felt like I didn't really make any decisions. I just drew, drew watched my opponent play, and hope I, I drew the, the right cards. Whereas with this deck... It feels like you have a lot of agency over what's happening. And it's really powerful. Has some busted draws. And I just love this deck. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for some more amulet content and some gameplay coming on the gameplay channel. And I'll also post some videos on this one. And uh, you're probably going to see a lot more amulet titan in the upcoming months because I love this deck. Still going to play my twiddle storm deck. I'm going to try to change the list. Maybe it doesn't even play the ring anymore because of uh, Ragdoll Scam. And now you're probably just going to tr try to be faster than decks like Yawgmoth, Scales, and Hamulet. But for now, I love this deck. Let me know what you think about Amulet Titan in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys later.